Okay, so I will be talking about Ebasaba theory and fine cellular groups in my main talk. So in the pre-talk today, I will be <clears throat> explaining the background that will be required for the main talk. So I will uh, essentially just be talking about Ibasaba theory as it was developed for class groups, and then Ibasaba theory for elliptic curves and impedance varieties that was developed by Maser. So if I have to give a one-line slogan for what is Ibasaba theory, I would say, that Ibasawa theory is the study of arithmetic objects in infinite towers of number fields. And the arithmetic objects that we will be concerned about today are essentially going to be class groups and cellular groups of elliptic curves or obedient varieties. So I'm probably just saying. So what sort of a tower am I talking about? So we will consider uh, the base fields to be Q or F to be a number field over Q. And we will look at the tower, which is going to be Q I'm going to just call that Q0 for notational reasons contained in Q1. And I'm going to call this Q sic. So by sic, I mean this is the cyclotomic um, extension. I'll come to that in a second. So what are these QNs? the Galois group of Qn over Q is isomorphic to a cyclic group of power P to the N. And Qn is the unique group of power P to the N that is contained inside Q adjoined the P to the N plus one at roots of unity. So now when I take when I want to look at what's the Galba group of Q cyclotomic over Q, I'm going to call that gamma. And this is just going to be the inverse limit of Z mod P to the N, which is isomorphic to the p adic integers. So a couple of very quick remarks. So essentially it follows from the kronecker weber theorem that Q cyclotomic over Q is the unique ZP extension um, of Q. And Q cyclotomic is contained inside of Q adjoined all the P power roots of unity. Now, if F is any number field, it is still possible construct the cyclotomic extension in the same way so the cyclotomic zp extension for a number field will always exist but this might not be the unique zp extension so if f is not totally real it is known that there exist 
at least R2 plus one distinct ZP extensions over the base field F. And so because it's not totally real, R2, which is the number of complex embeddings, um, so this is strictly bigger than zero, and you have more ZP extensions. And if F is totally real, then it is conjectured That cyclotomic extension is the unique ZP extension over the base field. So that it is exactly, um, there are exactly R2 plus one ZP extensions. That's the conjecture. So, to talk about Ibasawa theory, I have to introduce a slightly technical object called the uh, Ibasawa algebra. So the Ibasawa algebra can be defined for any uh, piadic analytic group, but I will only be sticking to some simple examples for today for the purpose of explanation. So let G be any OP P attic uh, group and you can just keep the example G equals gamma, which is isomorphic to ZP in mind. And then you can define the Ibasawa algebra lambda G as, so we write it as lambda G or ZP double bracket G. And this is defined as the inverse limit of these formal power series uh, sorry, uh, as formal group rings, inverse limit with ZP coefficients and the group ring uh, that you're going to be considering is ZP uh, bracket G mod H, where H runs over all open normal subgroups of G. So what the Vasava algebra is doing with, is that it's a variation of group rings of G with ZP coefficients, which is taking the topology of G into account. And that's sort of important because working with the formal group ring ZP bracket G it would just be extremely hard and um, you wouldn't be able to really um, make much progress. But there is a very important result of SER and uh, I yeah, I'll just say Sarah. And it was probably also observed by Ibasawa, um, but it was written slightly differently. And the statement is as follows, is when gamma is ZP, ZP gamma, is isomorphic to a power series ring in one variable. And how do you get this isomorphism? So you choose a topological generator of capital gamma, that's called a little gamma, and you map it to one plus t. And this isomorphism will play an important role in um, a lot of the things that we discuss. So something that I want you to notice is that 
when g is gamma, the Ibizawa algebra lambda g is not a principal ideal domain. You have the ideal that is generated by p and t, and that is uh, a height two ideal. That's the maximal ideal of height two. And um, the, the interesting bit though, is that there's a structure theorem which very much resembles the structure theorem that we are familiar with uh, from our first course in algebra. So I'm going to again take g to be equal to gamma, which was isomorphic to zp. That's my setup. So the statement is as follows, let m be a finitely generated uh, lambda gamma module. Then M is pseudo-isomorphic. I'll explain to you in a second what is pseudo-isomorphism. It's pseudo-isomorphic to lambda R So pseudo-isomorphism just means that there is a homomorphism from the left-hand side to the right-hand side with a finite kernel and a finite co-kernel. And uh, mi's are just integers, nj's are just integers, and fj's are called distinguished polynomials. These are irreducible distinguished polynomials. And uh, a distinguished polynomial is a polynomial. So it's going to be a polynomial in Z, P, um, with the variable T. And the leading coefficient is going to be one and all other coefficients are going to be divisible by P. So R, the R that's showing up here is called the rank of M. For almost everything that we discussed today, this will be zero. So we will be talking about torsion lambda gamma, or torsion lambda gamma modules. The summation of mi is called mu, and the summation in j degree of j is called lambda. Okay, and maybe one last definition that I have to say for uh, this statement is you can define the characteristic polynomial of M to be uh, the polynomial P to the power mu, so product of J, F, J, and J. So this is essentially the uh, annihilator of the module M. So now I will move to talking about the results of um, Ivasava. So this will be the section where I'll talk about the Ivasava theory class groups that was developed essentially by Ivasava. So he proved this phenomenal theorem. It's probably one of my favorite theorems. It says, let P be the largest, sorry, yeah. Let EN be the largest power of P that 
divides the class number of fn. Maybe maybe I should go back and say something a little more. So let f infinity over f be any zp extension. So fn is going to be the nth layer of that extension. Right, let p, let en be the largest power of p that uh, divides the class number of fn. Then, en is mu p to the n lambda n plus nu or n sufficiently large where mu and lambda are non-negative integers and nu is just any integer. So he's telling you that there is this very precise growth formula uh, when you go up the tower for the p part of the class group. And he conjectured that if you're looking at the cyclotomic ZP extension, then the mu invariant, which I'll just call mu cyclic, should be equal to zero. So this is called the classical Lewisawa mu equals zero conjecture. And what is known about this is um, there's a theorem of Ferrero-Washington from 1979 where they proved this conjecture for f over q abelian. And in my talk, I will talk about some other results that I have in this direction for a class of number fields called p-rational number fields. Okay, now I will quickly move on to explaining the Ivasaba theory for Selmer groups of obedient varieties. There are lots of people who have worked uh, in this area, but I'm just going to write down the name of Mazur because it was started by him in 1972. And he started this theory for, again, just ZP expansions. So throughout the section, P will be a prime that will not be equal to two. And again, I'll only be looking at ZP extensions. So everything that I say will be true for abelian varieties, but maybe it's just easier to say it for elliptic curves. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, one of the key things that you want to understand when you're studying elliptic curves is the number of rational points on the elliptic curve. And Essentially, one of the only ways we can do it is by studying the Selmer group. So if you were familiar with what a Selmer group is, like keep that definition in mind, that is perfectly fine. If you don't think about Selmer groups every day, then the one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that this is an object that will measure local global failure. So the idea is that when you have an elliptic curve, if even if it has um, 
points mod p for every p, it might not have rational, like global rational points. And the Selmer group measures that. So a formal definition, which um, is the definition that will be the easiest to state is the following, but I personally feel that this definition might not be the most intuitive. The, um, a very good reference for this would be, for example, Silverman's book. So zero, so E bracket P to the M over F. So this is the P to the M Selmer group is going to be the kernel of the map H1 GSF. I'll tell you in a second what GSF is. To S H1 B E. Yeah. So GSF is the Galva group FS over F, where FS is the maximal unramified outside S extension of F. And S is a finite set. of primes in F that necessarily contains the primes above P uh, the primes of bad reduction of E And it doesn't really matter for us because piece uh, not two, but I'll still write it, the Archimedean primes. So as I said, the Selmer group is going to measure some sort of a local global failure. So this is the global group, this is the local group, it's the kernel. Now, we are not necessarily interested in the P to, uh, P to the M torsion. So I'll take inverse limits, sorry, I'll take direct limits and talk about, so E P infinity F, this is the P primary part of the Selmer group. And just for notational reasons, I will write it as cell E over F because I'll never talk about the whole Selmer group. I'll always just be talking about a P part. So right here. And this is the direct limit of cell And once again, I will not necessarily be interested in what's happening at a finite layer or over a number field, but instead what's happening at the top. So I will look at cell E over F infinity, which is the direct limit where I'm going over the tower. So another technical thing that we have to do in Ibisaba theory is we don't always just look at this discrete module, so the discrete summer group. We have to take its Pontryag and dual, which we often call X. This is the Pontryag and dual. This makes 
the module that I'm interested in, a compact lambda gamma module. And okay, so maybe I should write down And the first theorem that Maser proved was, so I could write this as a theorem of Maser, was that if f infinity over f is any ZP extension, then x is a finitely generated lambda gamma module. And what does that mean? Well, that means that you can apply the structure theorem So once again, you will have a mu invariant and a lambda invariant associated to this dual Selvar group. But he was not able to show that, okay, yeah. But what he was not able to show was that it is torsion. So he made the following conjecture that if P is a prime of good ordinary reduction, then X is torsion and the only evidence we have in this direction is A result by Cotto from 2004. It's a very deep result. For elliptic curves over Q and, um, and if the elliptic curve is defined over Q, but you're base changing it to an abelian extension f over q. So torsion is still a difficult thing to prove. So we do not know whether the rank r that was showing up in the module, uh, in the structure theorem, sorry, is zero or not. If the reduction type is super singular, then we know that it is not torsion. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, because it's a finitely generated lambda gamma module, the structure theorem holds, you can still define the new invariant. And in some cases, you can like explicitly like do some computations to see if it is torsion or not. Maser did that. And he I'll attribute it to Maser again. And, um, so what he showed was that there are elliptic curves defined over Q with good ordinary reduction at the prime P. Which, uh, for which the dual Selmer is torsion as well. 
and the mu invariant of the elliptic curve over the cyclotomic extension is strictly positive. So you found these examples. So what does that mean? Well, it means that even though there is a structure theorem for Selmer groups, which is very similar to that of class groups, it is not behaving exactly like class groups when you go up the tower. There is some difference. So Coates and Sujata in 2005 initiated the study of what's called the fine Selmer group. And that will be my main object of uh, discussion in the main talk. And what is the fine Selmer group? So this is a subgroup of the Selmer, which is obtained by putting more, more conditions of vanishing at primes above P. So formally speaking, you can write the fine Selmer group as And if we do a little bit of diagram chasing, then you can actually see that this can also be written as, as in the second line here. So once again, we will take direct limits and work with what is happening at the infinite layer. So just to remind you again, this is the P primary fine Selmer group. And they conjectured what's called conjecture A of Coates and Sujata, that the dual of the fine Selmer group over the cyclotomic extension is a finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module. And when they say a finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module, they really mean this should be true for all reduction types. So there's no condition on the reduction type. And mu of the fine Selmer group should be zero. Maybe I should change my notation here a little bit. Maybe I should say X cyclotomic to note, to note that this is for the Selmer group. Yeah. So this is the conjecture. And the proof of theorem, so this is Coates and Sujata from 2005, and there was an alternate proof given by Meng Bai Lim and Kumar Marty in 2016 that if your elliptic curve is such that your base field P contains the P torsion points. then conjecture A is equivalent to the classical Vivasava mu equals 
zero conjecture. So what this theorem is sort of telling us is that the right analog of the class group in uh, the Ibisawa theoretic setting is the fine summer group. So the fine summer group is somehow interpolating um, the class group and the summer group. And even if you're not somebody who is interested in um, summer groups, you might want to still think about fine summer groups. And this is um, the reason. So even if like things like conjecture A do not seem very interesting to you, um, there is another reason why this fine summer group is very important in this whole theory, uh, in, in Ibasawa theory. That's because of the Ibasawa main conjecture. So this is the last thing I'll talk about today. So in arithmetic geometry, uh, there is generally this philosophy that there is an algebraic side, there's an analytic side, and you try to relate them. This relationship is generally very deep and you want to get information on one side and extract information on the other side using this deep relationship. So that's that's what, what we do almost all the time. And what I've talked about so far has been the algebraic side. I will not explain the analytic side in detail because that is um, firstly not something that I'm uh, studying and also that's gonna take a lot of time, but, but I'll say the following thing, that the, I, yeah, the characteristic ideal, so what is the Ivasaba main conjecture? The Ivasaba main conjecture says that the characteris characteristic ideal of the dual Selmer And I'm just gonna say this for the base field Q for simplicity is generated by a piadic L function. And what is a piadic L function? Well, to say it in like just a few words, it's something that will interpolate your normal Hasse-Lay L function at one. So the all that I'm trying to say over here is that there is this algebraic side, which is the characteristic ideal generated by the characteristic polynomial. And the Ibasawa main conjecture is saying that there is an analytic side as well. And uh, these two are very closely related. So there is another way of writing this. This was essentially done by Cato. And, when you're tr and what he showed was that when you're trying to prove or study the Ibasawa main conjecture, you have to essentially study the following uh, exact sequence. So this is the Ivasava cohomology group. Um, this is the inverse limit of H1s. We're looking at the ideal that's generated by Z cado. So Z cado is uh, an element of the Euler system that Cato defined. Then we look at H1 Ivasava local and look at the local Z Kato. Then you have the Selmer group. And then you have the fine Selmer group. And 
And the Ibasawa mean conjecture essentially boils down for showing that the characteristic ideal of the dual Selmer is equal to the characteristic ideal of H1 Ibasawa local. to local and using an Euler system argument, sorry, an Euler characteristic argument, you can reformulate this to say that the characteristic ideal H1 Ivasava Z Kato is the same as the characteristic ideal of the common Selmer group over the cyclotomic extension. So Yes, the fine Selmer group is not just some ad hoc ad object that was defined. This is something that actually also shows up in the study of the Ivasava main conjecture. So this probably is a good place for me to stop. Um,